परम करुणा बाहु दुई जन निताय गौरचंद्र शर्शिरमणि के बल आनंद Transcendental ecstatic joy. Oh brother, I implore you to worship Sri Chaitanya Nitai with firm faith. Give up your attachment to sense gratification and merge into this nectar by chanting the names of Hari. Look, oh brother, there are no benefactors in the three worlds who are as merciful as them. Even birds and animals are fulfilled in stones melt by hearing the glories of their qualities. Serving the cycle of birth and death, having fallen by the wayside, without any hope achieve, for achieving their company, the Lord of Death will come and make, me, make you suffer the souls of your activities. So sings Lushan Das. Jai Lushan Das Thakur Ki Jai. Dayal Nitai Chaitanya Bole Nitai Chaitanya
Such a merciful personality as Nityananda Prabhu is not to be found anywhere. He suffers a beating from Jagai and Madai and still gives them love of God. 
When you become offenseless, you will obtain love of God. But in these names of Chaitanya and Nittai, there is no consideration of offenses. Once you have a taste for the holy name of Krishna, bondage to this world will come to an end. When there is attachment to the holy name of Krishna, then very easily the life of a living being becomes <coughs> successful. Without attachment to Krishna, life is simply false. If the mercy of Lord Gora is there, then at the end of life you will obtain the beautiful vision of Radha and Sham in Vrindavan. <laughs> One forty six. This will be the last kirtan. Narod Muni Bajai Bina Narod Mamoro Name Narod Muni.
prays at the feet of Sri Rupa Goswami, with the chanting of Hari Nam, and always continue in this way. Hari Go, Jai Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Gaur Bhakti Vrindhi Ki Jai, Rupa Anuga Guru Bhargava Ki Jai, Sushila Bhakti Sundar Gundari Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, Shabhat Bhakti Vikra Hanyasi Maharaj Ki Jai, Shabhat Bhakti Kamathyagi Maharaj Ki Jai. Very busy traveling, preaching lifestyle. <laughs> um, and Marge is going to the Rainbow Festival actually next week. So I'm here for the weekend um, and a couple of days next week. Uh, Shukra Tega Maharaj is probably one of the most favorite people on earth. Um, <laughs> uh, seriously, uh, absolutely brilliant, fully dedicated, um, and a real holder of uh, the principle of sacrifice um, that was given by our Guru Shri Shri Guru Maharaj. So a person who lives a life of giving and sacrifice, and really I'm talking about every single day. Um, and you know, we're told in the scriptures that the symptom of, of prema is that you're giving, and when you receive uh, some <laughs> response to that giving, you want to give more. So sometimes we feel like when we give in our life, we feel exhausted and we need to like take some time for ourselves. You know what I mean? This, this idea. And what we see in the life of Maharaj is that truly a life of giving and love is self-perpetuating. Um, that the remuneration from the Lord and from the devotees is, is not, you don't feel exhausted at the end of it, you feel more energy um, for the next day. So, we hear these things, but then we can see them in the life of the devotee. So we're fortunate that Maharaj has joined us here today. <laughs> can you see everyone, Maharaj? What's up? Can you see everyone? I believe so. Okay. I can't see the people in the kitchen. <laughs> Maybe we should get a second shorter one, huh? Yeah. Um, okay. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shadakaya Chakshurun Minitam Dina Tazmoy Shri Guru Venama Banchakalpaturubhyascha kripa sindubhya eva cha patitanam pavane bho vaishnavi bho namo 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 Mahavaranaya Krishna prema pradayate Krishnaya Krishna chaitanya namne gaura tishe namo Nindam tam pula kot karena vikasam ni praprasuna chavim Pardi krita hari hari varang tam nirantar varang tam muhu Nityam tam nitramasu nirjana charai sinchang tam urvitalam Gayan tam nija parsharai paribritam Shri Gaura Chandram Nama Hare Krishna. All right. Well, my obeisance is to everyone. I'm shy to speak after such a uh, undue <laughs> introduction. <laughs> <laughs> because I can't say it other than anything other than that, <laughs> but you cannot also speak against the <laughs> introducer and, and host for our program. So I'm I'm bound. I have to break the etiquette one way or the other. <laughs> this is my condition. So please forgive me. Um, but whatever you've heard, just consider that the great affection and wonderful capacity to appreciate truth in even the place where it's found to the least extent, which is the great quality of a Vaishnava. Ordinary people, they want to see faults even in the midst of good things. And the qualities of the Vaishnavas, they want to see the good things even in the places that are full of faults. So here you are getting a great teaching, a great example, a great illustration of that. <laughs> well, Today is a very special day on our Vaishnava calendar. It is the Sri Jagannath Dev's Rata Yatra. And yesterday also was the observance of Gundicha Marjan, 
as well as the disappearance day of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Srila Gadadhar Pundit. So, uh, because today is the day many devotees are able to gather due to social circumstances, then something should be said in praise of all of these important things. But to begin, we can add another important thing that's not even on that list, <laughs> which is that today, it also marks the day that our Param Gurudev Srila Bhukti Rakok Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj first came to Sri Kuladeep Dham and began to reside in what is now Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Mot. So there is a few different ways by which we may say the exact date that the Mot started, but one way we can say it is today. Right? And Guru Maharaj himself said that Rati Yatra is a very auspicious day to begin anything, to make a journey. It is an ideal day. It is, you know, if, when Krishna wants to go out for a journey, he's going to have the best date picked out. So he takes this day for his journey. So for any auspicious undertaking, this is an ideal day to begin. So, uh, accordingly, Param Gurudev came to Sri Kuladeep Dham and took up his residence in Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mot on this day. And at that time, he composed this verse. Shri Mach Chaitanya Saraswata Mottavara Udgita Kirti Jaya Shreem Bibhak Sambhati Ganga Tata Nikata Navadipa Kaladri Rajya Yatra Shri Gaura Saraswata Motta Niratha Gaura Gatha Grinanti Nityam Rupanuga Shri Kritamati Guru Gauranga Radha Jitasha Stating his mission or declaring his purpose. Right? We can say more so than the acquiring of a land or the registering of a document or something like that, the beginning of any spiritual undertaking begins with an ideal. It begins with a clarification of an objective, of a spiritual ideal after which to aspire. This is how spiritual reality works because in spirituality everything is infinite and nothing can actually ever be attained. We have to be careful where we say that, but we all are happy family gathering here. We can understand. All the stuff that we're always into will never actually attain any of it. <laughs> but just eternally trying to is itself the greatest life that there could ever be. Horima! <laughs> <laughs> so, Guru Maharaj established his ideal, the most noble, lofty, dignified ideal after which to aspire and declared what that is, how it is done, where it will be done, by whom it will be done and so on and so forth, giving a summary in this point. Right? So they're saying that the place where this will be cultivated is in Nabadib Dham and more specifically Kholadib Dham and more specifically, Gupta Govardhan. So, uh, this place has great significance in the uh, eternal aspiration of the Rupanuga Sampradaya in the service of Radha Govinda. And uh, is specially described by Srila Rupa Goswami in his compositions. So, choosing his uh, place according to the nature of the eternal spiritual plane, he came to reside in this plane that also appears to be on earth, or where these two planes intersect, so to speak. At that intersection point, he chose to take up his seat as the basis for the cultivation of this ideal. As nobody dumb, why? Right? Because we find that in this age of Kali, it is not only that the worship of Radha and Krishna is ideal, but that their combined form appearing in this present time of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that by rendering service to Mahaprabhu, the maximum benefit can be acquired by the spiritual aspirant. That this is really the Lord Himself. If the Lord Himself has come to you and extended an invitation to you and offered you an opportunity in a, and, and put on a special guise just for you. And nah, <laughs> I like that. This won't be appropriate. 
Rather, if he's come with, to express unprecedented uh, magnanimity in an unparalleledly sweet way, how can it be resisted? How can that not become the central focus of our cultivation? That, you know, that most immediate contact point that through which we get connection with the higher infinite, our maximum focus will go there. This point he is also given. That we want to engage in the Sanatan Dharva, Jaiva Dharma, the eternal service of the Lord in the broadest sense. But how specifically are we going about that? Our, the way that that is adjusted is the more that that from that source has come out, extended itself to us, our, we're giving more attention to that outward extension. So Radha Krishna, this original plane of Goloka Vrindavan, is held in the highest sense, but also held above on our heads and given, actually, in one sense, the least attention. Yeah, a little carefully to understand. More attention, rather, is going to Mahaprabhu. The, the, the form that Radha Krishna has assumed to come for our eternal benefit, extend this unprecedented gift to us. But even more attention than Mahaprabhu, attention is coming to Gurudev, the personal representation of Mahaprabhu, the you know, uh, living form that Mahaprabhu has assumed in our life to connect us with these things. So like that, we're connecting in this line, and then our attention or the focus or expression of our attempt to serve, follow, reciprocate, or whatever it may be, is adjusted according to such proximity. So similarly, if we are to choose a place, then more so than Vrindavan, we will appreciate nobody. And within nobody, where might we come? We might come to the place where Mahaprabhu expressed his mercy to the greatest extent, to the deepest extent. So where is that? That place is known as Aparad Bhanjan Bhat, the place where Mahaprabhu forgave the offenders. And which offender? The victory flag. He held on the top of the temple, as the temple is shining on the bank of the Ganga. Where Udav is speaking in praise of the gopis of Vrindavan after visiting Prajadam. And just after this slok comes, just a few after the slok where he says, I pray to be a blade of grass or whatever it may be in the plain of Vrindavan. Then after that again he says this, Bonde Brajastrinam Padarenum Abhikshnasha. I pray, why do I pray to be a blade of grass in Vrindavan? Because I want always to receive the dust of the feet of the gopis on my head. And who are they? Jasham Hari Kata Udgitam, Hari Kata Udgita. This Udgita Udgita. Hari Kata Udgitam. The, 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 the speech, the discussion, the sort of exuberant song, the, the exalted songs that they have about Hari, Punati Bhubanatrayam. These things purify the three worlds. Why do I aspire for their feet? Because just their speech, just their singing about Krishna can purify the whole of the three worlds. So, uh, the victory flag can represent such Udgita Kirtan, Udgita Kirtan of Krishna. So, Sri Chaitanya Sarasata Motta Bara. This Supreme Mot, you know, Yatra, uh, Jasmine, Chatra, Vasanti, Timota. What is a Mot? A place in which students reside. Right? A place of dedicated students. And what sort of students? Sri Chaitanya Saraswata. Students of <coughs> Saraswati, in the line of Sri Chaitanya. So then Guru Maharaj gave many meetings of that Saraswati. Saraswati means Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Saraswati means the speech or expression of Chaitanya Dev himself. Saraswati means the Saraswati River, the conduit by which the whole Siddhanta of Beda Vyas Bhagavatam has come down. So the whole of the Vedic culture, Om, Gayatri, Ved, Puran, Upanishad, Vedanta, Bhagavatam, this stream of revelation culminating in the Leela of Chaitanya Dev. That Saraswati, that Saraswati, that Saraswati as well as the Saraswata Brahmins, who are, were praised as a highly exalted section of Brahmins in the proper sense. Brahmins as those who are devoted to Brahma, 
Brahma is understood as Bhagavan, he who is greater than the greatest and always becoming greater in the form of beauty, charm, sweetness and love. That Brahma, that Bhagavan, you know, a real Brahman is a, one who is devoted, adherent, in, engaged in study and cultivation and distribution of that. <clears throat> Yatra Shri Gaura Saraswata Mata Nirata. So in this place, the Shri, here there's two points made, right? Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. And then later, Yatra Shri Gaura Saraswata Mata. So you have Mat and Mat. Not, not sounds the same if we were to pronounce it, but the T is different, little spelling. Mat and Mat. Right? So, Mot means the place in which students reside. And Mot means the conception that they learn or the conception that they cultivate. So the Mot and the Mot. The, the place and the conception. So what is this place? It's the place where there are those who are adherent to the conception. So is it a physical place? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when those persons are there, yes. right? Meaning, that's what makes it what it is. So, Sri Gaura Saraswata Mata Nirata. Nirata. Rata means to be engaged or, or attached, involved in. You know, nirata means nishesh, you know, fully. Those who are fully engaged, have fully involved themselves, fully dedicated their lives to the conception of Gaura Saraswata, of Saraswati Thakur's representation of Mahaprabhu, Rupanuga, all the things we discovered. This place where those persons are, not only where they are, but where Gaura Gatha Grinanti, where they are spreading the glory of Chaitanya Dev, where they are uh, engaged in glorification and narration of the nobility of Sri Gauranga and his divine gift. And uh, I don't know if I can remember that slok right now, but this phrase is there in the Mat slok. Gauru Gatha, right? And then there's another slok that Gurudev wrote about Guru Maharaj that he liked about the rainy season. Maybe you, you know, Barshayam by Sajada Jaladov Marayan Vandra bearing Bibrad. I can't remember, but, it, but, but the, the main line he says, Gauru Gatha Gushayan. He gives like, that Gora Gatha here, and then Gurudev glorifies Guru Maharaj as Gora Gatha Gushayan. That he makes a comparison between the heaviest rain of the year, when the storm clouds, the monsoon thunderheads are thundering like, like he compares them to kettle drums, or those massive you know, drums they play in an orchestra. Yeah. Like when, he says figuratively, when, they, when the, the monsoon clouds are vibrating their kettle drums and the thunder is like that, like that, you means Guru Marsh, you're going around and Gauru Gata Gusha, you're vibrating this Gauru Kata everywhere. And in that way, you're showering not water but divine mercy all over the people of this land. He makes glorification like that. I wish I that's look, I forgot it. I used to be able to recite it. I'm ashamed. Ah, uh, so the place where those adherent to the conception engage in glorification of Mahaprabhu. And to what, with what ideal, what aspiration? Nityam Rupanuga Sri Kritamati Guru Gauranga Radha Jitasha They have the aspiration for Guru Gauranga Radha and Govinda. And that different ways, Ajita may have some question about that. It may be rendered as Krishna, Govinda Sundar. It may be qualifying Asha as Ajita or some sort of unconquerable hope. So in that sense, hinting at the verse that we often heard from Srila Gurudev in this connection, Asha bare ramrita sindhu mayi katanjit kalo mayati gamita kila sampratam. For so long I have been bearing this hope which is like an ocean of nectar. So that we'll call that, that sort of hope expressed by Das Goswami, that may be qualified as unconquerable hope. And that is what is really Sri Rupa Nuga Kritamati. That is the dedication, that is the, 
the line of aspiration of the Rupanugas. Who is a Rupanuga? Das Goswami is a Rupanuga. You want to understand what is Rupanuga? Das Goswami's life will show you. So, like that. With such aspiration for the service of Guru, of Goranga, of Radha and Govinda in the line of Sri Rupa, the followers of Saraswati Thakur and Mahaprabhu here are engaged in the glorification of Mahaprabhu. This is his conception of his life, how he wanted to spend his final years as he described it. So with that, Guru Maharaj, Param Guru Maharaj came to Chaitanya Saraswat Mot on this day and began from that time. And immediately some uh, locals joined him, some monkeys, some snakes, some <laughs> he, shared, he shared his initial cottage with the snake. Snake lived in the top, he lived in the bottom. He didn't mind the snake, the snake didn't mind him. The first building is a thatched hut, and you know, the thatched hut is you know, basically <laughs> And in the rafters, it's often, it's common that a snake will live up there. <laughs> so the snake didn't bother him, he didn't bother the snake. They, <laughs> they resided together for some time with Govardhan. And he said, half the day I would study Shastra and half the day I would chant Harinam. One lakh of Harinam and Shastra. And some offering for Giriraj. Like that, he began to live there. And gradually, Gurudev and so many other devotees came to join and assist him in that and to engage in such Gora Gatha Grinanti, spreading the glories of Mahaprabhu, we can say, in general and also in understanding the, both the breadth by which they are spread and the depth to which they are understood. And if anything, Guru Maharaj is known for his depth of understanding, his deepening of the of the of appreciation for Mahaprabhu, right? To spread something, right? You can put, make two, like an X, Y axis. If it's spreading, it may spread on one axis, it may spread on another. So you have, you have width and you have depth, right? So to spread, someone may need to spread it wide, someone may need to spread it depth, you know? So we may say Guru Maharaj's emphasis or primary contribution was there. So, you know, on this uh, day, when anniversary thereof, then we may pray that the ideal for which he came there and the ideal which he wanted, all, everyone who would come later in the future to serve there, that that ideal may take its seat in our heart, that it may uh, govern our every thought, word, and deed, and that we may have the service connection of his dear devotees and representatives, headed by our beloved Srila Gurudev, Om Vishnu Pad Srila, Bhakti Sundar, Govinda Dev, Goswami Maharaj. We can say, Guru Maharaj established all of these things, but who showed us what these things are? Who showed us the, the, how to receive and then apply and reciprocate all of that? That is Gurudev. He is the personification of Chaitanya Sarasat Mod, what it means to be a member of the Mod what sorts of dignity, what sort of virtue, all such qualities, activities, all round, seva, everything that he showed us. So to remember the founding of Chaitanya Sarasana, we cannot but also remember the personification of what that became and what made it possible for all of us to uh, have any connection with that. Without which, where would we be? We're, we're sad to think, we cannot, we cannot think what, where we would be, what have, would have become with us were it not for that. Hare Krishna. So, as we were briefly discussing this morning, this day of Rati Yatra uh, and the founding of the Mod both have their connection through connection of the Rupanuga Sampradaya. Uh, the day of Ratyatra is also very significant for the founding of the line of Sri Rupa. Because we hear that Rupa Goswami, when he came to Puri and he observed the Ratyatra and he observed Mahaprabhu's mood and the verses and expressions of Mahaprabhu at that time, he could understand 
what feature of Krishna Lila, what form of divine separation from Krishna he was tasting. And to such an extent that he composed a verse summarizing that. And he was living in this uh, place of Sudhapakul with Haridas Thakur at the time. And he was meditating and composed a verse. And then he wrote it on a leaf and he tucked it into the, some gap above the door of his hut. And went to take a bath. And in the time while he was bathing, Mahaprabhu came by to visit. Because Mahaprabhu would come every day on his way to take a bath to visit Haridas Thakur. So he came there, and Rupa Goswami is not there, but they find Surup Dhamar or others are also there, and they find this sloka. And they read this sloka, and Surup Dhamar or Mahaprabhu, they are amazed. What sort of sloka is this? How has it been composed? And seeing that, Surup Dhamar understands that Rupa Goswami understands what Mahaprabhu is really internally cultivating, which it says in Chaitanya Charitamrita, everyone else could not understand. Suddenly Mahaprabhu is in ecstasy, he's chanting these things, his body is ex- expressing such extraordinary transformations, and people, they're just in awe, they're just amazed. It's not that they, they get it or something, it's such an extraordinary thing, they're just you know, carried away by such a divine expression. But Rupa Goswami was, we can say really, from another perspective, given entrance into that internal uh, uh, play within Mahaprabhu's heart. So, you know, Surup Damodar, he says, you must have given your mercy to Rupa Goswami. You're not revealing everything that's within you to everyone, but you've revealed it to him. And then after that, you know, and Mahaprabhu, everything about it was beautiful. Mahaprabhu saw Rupa Goswami's handwriting. He said, this handwriting looks like strings of pearls. Right? It like the composition, the meaning, even the form of the, of the writing is everything about it. So beautiful. Is Sri Rupa, right? Uh, in ordinary, we are acquainted in like Western devotees. We think Rupa means form, you know. And it does, of course. But in colloquial speech in India, the word Rupa also means beauty, synonymous with beauty. And it's sometimes used that way, even in Charitamrita. Like to say someone is Rupavan, means, literally just means to have, they've got form. But the, the connotation becomes, their form is very beautiful. They have a very nice form. That's the implication. So it's like the world of ideals, like what form should be. Yes. What, you know, the topmost expression of form. Yes. Mm. So, a prakrita. Right? This is everything about Rupa Goswami. And then from this time, Mahaprabhu uh, encouraged the devotees to have special regard for Rupa Goswami. And he even organized and wish, wanted all the devotees to give their blessings or best wishes and support to Rupa Goswami. And his poetry was examined by the greatest experts and approved and delighted even the Haridas Tagur and Ramananda Rai and everyone. Right? And from that time, this current, we can say, the Rupa Nuga Dhara is flowing. Right? Shri Gora Numatum, Sarupa Viditam, Rupa Grijanavritam, Rupa Dir Paribeshitam. Right? That uh, the, what was uh, given or revealed by Mahaprabhu, what was known to Srivup Damarar, what was revered or adored by Sanatan Goswami, and what was distributed, what was given by Rupa Goswami. Today also, Bhakti Thakur, we can run with that. Rupa Dhir Parivishana, Raghu Ganera, Shaditam, Sevitam, what was served, what was tasted by Raghunath, Jiva Dhir Abhirakkatam, protected by Jiva Goswami, Shuka Shiva Brahmadi, Urava Samaditam, what was adored by Shiva, Shuka, Brahma, even Uddhav, Sri Radha Padaseva, Namrita Mahu, Thaddatum, Isho Bhavan. You, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you give us even that, the divine service of the holy feet of Sri Muti Radharani, which is the thing which Rupa Goswami distributed to the world. So Ratiyatra Day reminds us of this, of the 
uh, current of Sri Rupa emerging in the world, so to speak. And then that current is carried on by the parampara. And uh, also, you know, at the same time, Jagannath Rath Yatra, outside of our specific line, is a day of great joy and celebration for all Vaishnavas, even for all Indian people in general. Right? And in the broadest sense, why do people celebrate this day? Because it is a wonderful day on which the Lord personally comes out and gives His darshan to all the people. It is a day of unprecedented grace. The Lord Himself is coming out to give His darshan to you. <laughs> and we can say some perhaps added sweetness of this comes in the lives of foreigners who aren't ever allowed to go inside. <laughs> it was known in that way as an extraordinary thing for the Lord to come out, even by the people in general. But we can say, for those who don't ever get to go inside, we also can say, yes, we appreciate this very much. <laughs> This is the cause of this mercy of Lord Jagannath. And he is known as Dina Vandu and has so many names of being so much eager, so much appreciative of even persons who are in a very poor or impoverished condition. Right? Guru Maharaj gives that very extreme example about a boy who was born from a woman who was raped by a Muslim conqueror in Orissa. When the Muslims were invading Orissa, one of the officials in their army or something like that had abused a woman and a boy was born as a result. So that in the strict Hindu society, that boy is, has no position. He's you know, born out of sin and all of these things. So he has... but. He's not by culture or anything like that, a Muslim either. So he has no place, not in Muslim society, not in Hindu society. He's, nobody wants him. <laughs> no, he doesn't fit anywhere. Everything about his situation is undesirable for him, for, for her, for everybody. But so this boy felt he had no, what prospect does he have in life? What chance? So he saw his only shelter, his only friend is Jagannath. Yes. Who will give any affection to me? Who will have any grace for me? No one in society, but only Jagannath. So he became as just a young boy, a devotee of Jagannath. And he lived far away from the city of Puri. But he would cook. And as a boy, he would, what he had, he would offer it to Jagannath. And so it was said that in Puri, the priests in the temple, they sometimes saw after the offering, that Jagannath had some kitchari in his mouth. <laughs> but there was no kitchari in the offering. Because we hear many examples where Jagannath is talking with the pujaris and eating their offerings, and the pujaris are having this personal relationship with Jagannath. That we can say is a, a common miracle. Right? But this sort of miracle is more uncommon. Why does he have remnants of food on his mouth that weren't in the offering? So the priests are thinking, what's going on here? So then they, they start to think, someone from afar must be offering food to Jagannath, and for that reason it's ar arriving on his mouth. So they start searching around, who's making kitchari at this time every day for Jagannath? Know? And eventually they see one day, one, this poor boy cooking and offering. And then they com maybe they compare it, anyhow, some means they understood. This, the Jagannath every day was, maybe he was taking their offering or not, but he was taking this boy's offering. <laughs> so this was an illustration. How merciful is Jagannath? How eager is he to reciprocate with the offerings and the love of his devotees? You know, overlooking any question of caste or creed or worldly position or anything. Right? So with that sort of merciful glance, he comes out of the temple and gives his blessings to the whole of the world on this day. So it is a wonderful thing. A due cause for Harinam <laughs> Sankirtan, for chanting the glories of Jagannath. And we hear in Charitamrita very beautifully how Mahaprabhu arranged for seven 
groups of devotees and 14 radangas and harinam to fill the sky and dispel their sounds and the Vaishnavas madly chant in praise of Jagannath. And then from there it goes into deeper demonstrations of some subtle uh, exchange between himself and Jagannath as he danced. And then after this, they arrive in this place, Balagandi, this garden. And Mahaprabhu takes a break and they serve prasadam. And this is a chance where everyone can come and offer things to Jagannath. This is one garden where he takes a break. Then it says at that time, anyone can come and offer to Jagannath. So people come from everywhere with all their pots and 360 degrees around Jagannath for 10 meters, 50 meters, 100 meters, 200 meters, everywhere, all around, thousands and thousands of offerings in the, beside this garden. And while this is going on, then Mahaprabhu and the devotees are resting in the garden. And by the arrangement of Sarvabhoma and the devotees, uh, the king comes and gets Mahaprabhu's mercy at that time. Right? He, as he comes, Dressed in disguise, he massages Mahaprabhu's feet and chants, Jayati Tehidikam Janmana Braja, he starts. And when he gets to Tavakatam Ritam Tapta Jibanam Kavi Biriditam Kalma Shabbaham Shabanamangalam Srimaratatam Bhubigrinanti De Purirajana. Then Mahaprabhu embraces him, Buridajan, Buridajan. You are the most munificent, the most gracious, the most generous, the most kind of lifting person. That is what is expressed in this verse. Burida Jan. Buri means an abundance, and Da means to give. So one who gives in a great abundance, they are called Burida Jan. And here in this verse, the gopis are praising, saying, who is qualified to be described as Burida Jan? Really a most magnanimous or kind person. And they say, that person who tells us about Krishna. That person who gives us Hari Krishna Kathamrita. Tabo Kathamritam. Who gives us the nectar in the form of discussion about you. Tabo Kathamritam. Tapta Jivanam. The person whose lives are stricken with suffering. Who are suffering from, in a general sense, the fire of tapta means burnt, literally, or under the, subjected to extreme heat. So one way we can say that tapita means tritapjala, the threefold miseries of material existence from the body, the mind, the fellow living beings, the natural disasters, the person who is suffering from all of these things, then discussion of you, that is like amrita to them, right? Amrita means that which frees you from death. Tritap jala is what causes your death. So this is the thing that is rescuing me from that. But from a, another perspective, we can say, to say top to jivanam, the person who is suffering in life, that sort of top will not only be the suffering of material existence, it will be the suffering of separation from Krishna. That is a higher strata of suffering. And in this, but in that case, the amrita is the same discussion of yours. That will save us also from that. Tapta jivanam. Kavi beriditam. And this type of kotha, this type of discussion of you, it ha- when it is expressed, it is reiterated by even the greatest poets or the greatest expressions. Or from another perspective, there's no greater poetry, there's no greater literature, there's no greater verbal expression than that which is reverberated about you. You're the real subject. He is Uttama Shlok. Right? The Lord is glorified as Uttama Shlok. He who is praised by the highest poetry. Why? One way we can say because the best poets are his devotees. Or we could say because he inspires the best poetry. <laughs> you know, it's the best poetry. It means when, the, when you have the greatest subject, then the things that are, it's going to inspire are going to be the best. So from both perspectives. He attracts the best to praise him. That is both the token value of those persons as well as himself. Anyway, Kaviviritam. Srimod at Kaviviritam. 
uh, and this discussion, it can free us from all kolmosha, which means generally sin, but more broadly, pollution or contamination, which actually is the same thing. I saw some uh, just pop culture thing saying that the word pollution was the way it is used now about like chemicals in the environment, that usage has only existed for like 100 or 120 years. And prior to that, the word pollution only referred to something that was degradating to your, the practice of your religion. Mm-hmm. Like something that discouraged you or spoke against your conscience or your religious or spiritual views, that was pollution. Yeah. And then from there, it started to be used to refer to yeah. environmental, external things. It was originally a subjective expression, so to speak. Later they applied it to the objective world. So this word, as far as I understand, in the Sanskrit, kolmosha, carries that same double connotation of both sin or some internal thing and some pollution or some some, uh, contamination over someone. So kolmosh apoha means this discussion of you, it can remove that. Any tendency for sin or consequence of previous sin, both are uprooted, both are removed by discussion of you. Shavana mongalam means just to hear about it produces within us the greatest fortune. So the greatest ne- negative is negated and also the positive is granted. Shavana mongalam. But that mongalam, as Guru Maharaj, you know, what's here, abirinchad amongalam. For I first this one press, there's, I don't remember where it is, but there's one talk of Guru Maharaj when he says this is like, like a lightning bolt when he comes out with this sloka. He's talking about all types of worldly desires, worldly prospects, all the various entanglements and subtle forms of Maya and things like that. And then the way he crushes it all with it, Abirin Chadamangala. That's like just very, very sharp. I mean, Birinchi, Birincha is the name of Brahma used in that one verse that professes the appearance of Mahavru. So, abhirinchad means up to Brahma among all. Everything, even up to Brahma is, you know, simply speaking, is, is inauspicious, is negative, is part of the deception, is, part of, is actually part of misfortune. Everything, even up to Brahma, is misconception, misfortune, cannot be qualified by, as good in any sense. Right. It's, it's a verse describing material existence. What is the fault of everything in this world is that it's temporary, and even up to the position of Brahma it is, among all, not produ- productive of anything in your real interest. So, uh, to say, Shrobana Mongolam, to hear it gives us Mongol, means it gives us only connection with eternity, with higher consciousness, with Sat Chit Ananda, pure Chit Bilas pure spiritual substance, that sort of connection it grants us. This is, you know, like another point. When, uh, what is sadhu? Sadhu means sat. Sat only means eternal things. No one not engaged in cultivation of chit vilas on the spiritual plane, none of them are fit to be called sadhu. That type of point. Shravana right? mangalam, srimad atatam. And atatam means spread or like widely drawn, you know, like the, as the, like the sun's light going across the sky, that is called atatam. Diviva chakshur, atatam. Srimad right? atatam. So this, this discussion of Krishna, it, we can say, itself is spreading such beauty, such presence of beauty. Right? And, or we can say, within itself, it has beauty spread throughout it. So it has such beauty, such attractive quality. It has such inherent goodness and representation of your interest. It has the capacity to do away with all negative uh, pollution or contamination and all the previous consequences of being in a polluted or contaminated or sinful state. All such things happen. So someone who gives us that, who gives us that type of substance, they are worthy to be called Buddha John, really a magnanimous person, really someone giving us good things. So when 
when uh, Mahaprabhu hears the king uh, come to this look, he gets up, Burida John, Burida John, and embraces him. Wow, oh, you are, you have given, you, what you are giving me, it is of such, such value. And dare I say, perhaps in a similar spirit, Guru Maharaj wrote about Bhaktivinod Thakur. Guru Ram Granta Ram Gora Dhamarang Namarang Mura Bhakti Ram Buri Ram Bande Bhaktivinod Akam Sara. That Bhaktivinod Thakur is such a Buri Rajan. He has given us things of this quality, this qualification. The Sadguru Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasuti Thakur, 100 texts in praise of pure devotion, pure conception of pure devotion, pure conception of Harinam, Mahaprabhu's holy dham. He, what has he given us? This is a Burita Jan. So forever we joyfully bow to him. This is Guru Maharaj's poem. So Ratha Yatra Day, Mahaprabhu's grace upon the king reminds us of also Bhaktivinoda. And like this. Uh, then after that, the Ratha continues. But as it repeatedly states throughout the text, the cart of Jagannath cannot be moved by anyone. Only it moves by the will of Jagannath. No one can move it. And when after, the, after lunch, it's time to go, they leave. They can't, the cart won't move. Then they play to the king. Oh, the cart will not move. Then they bring so many strong people. Oh, we'll move the cart. They can't move the cart. Then they bring elephants. And the elephants can't even move the cart. And they're beating the elephants. And the elephants, the mad elephants are pushing and the cart can move. Then Mahaprabhu said, let's go. Then they, at that time they already took prasadam. Now prasadam distribution is going on. This is the only place I found personally in Chaitanya Charitamrita where it talks about prasadam distribution to non-devotees. There's one little point where it says, when Mahaprabhu is going out of the garden, there were some beggars, and Mahaprabhu indicated they may be given prasadam and said, Haribo. Mm. <laughs> some little, little point is there about that. And so he, some Haribo prasad to the beggars, they go out towards Jagannath. And then all the people, everyone is, everyone is crowded around, everyone is, is in anxiety, why won't the cart move, will the festival continue, what's going on, you know, there's tension going in the air, and the elephants are being beaten, and they're screaming, and all this, Mahabharu comes in, and, you know, gives a, looks at the king, everybody, relax, relax, and what, what are we going to do, Mahabharu just says, okay, everybody stop, everything you're trying to do, just stop, then he waves in his, his men, you guys take the ropes. Then he goes around the back and he puts his head on the cart and then <laughs> the cart goes. <laughs> it means what the elephants cannot do, the men cannot do, the king cannot do, no one can do. Mahaprabhu's devotees do effortlessly with this, the gentlest gesture of Mahaprabhu. And then when this happens, the people go mad. Oh, what the elephants could not do, what the king could not do, right? The king is already the representative of God. And <laughs> he cannot move Jagannath, but Mahaprabhu in such fashion moves Jagannath. Then, Jai Jagannath, Jai Shri Krishna, Chaitanya. This glorification of Mahaprabhu reverberates everywhere. Everyone is in ecstasy to see this sort of pastime. The point being that Jagannath moves really by the will of his devotees. And only uh, without Mahaprabhu, he did not want to go on. And these things are indicative of elements within the higher meaning of the Ratha Yatra as Krishna returning to Vrindavan from Kurukshetra, which is elaborately dealt with in Chaitanya Charitamrita, and we, this morning we read an article where Gurudev very nicely gives the gist of that uh, layer of meaning. That when Mahaprabhu is in the Ratha Yatra, then he's uh, at heart, he's in Kurukshetra, and he's eager to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan, just as all the people came to Kurukshetra with the hope that Krishna would return to Vrindavan. He had been gone for many years. 
and had been sending promises that he would come. He sent Uddhava, promising he will come soon. He sent Balaram, promising he will come soon, but still had not come. And then this occasion came of a solar eclipse, which is an inauspicious event, contrary to popular opinion these days around here. Right? So in this culture, the people would traditionally go to Kurukshetra to bathe in a lake or, and engage in other auspicious rites. So all the Brishnis, the dynasties, the various groups, so many people were, having, were converging, having a gathering perhaps at Kurukshetra. <laughs> and, um, and Krishna also came from Dharaka. And all the people of Braja, the whole village, Nanda, Jashoda, Sunanda, Upananda, everybody are coming up. And they have this meeting at Kurukshetra. And they have not seen each other for so long. And finally they meet again. But the meeting is awkward. <laughs> In that there is such an intensity of feeling, such an intensity of attachment. But the immediate circumstances don't allow for that. The, the circumstances don't allow for those feelings to be suitably expressed. So uh, there is some uh, subtle exchange of feeling through a couple of, through the speech that is found at that time. And then in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Kaviraj Goswami highlights this exchange and what is understood by it. And as Gurudev mentions in this article, how the meaning that Kaviraj Goswami highlights that Mahaprabhu was tasting at him, how he could draw that out, no one can understand. How it could come out, just reading the grammar or this or that, you cannot get it. It is, he, it is like just pure, deepest divine thing. You know, in one place Guru even says, the deep, deeper, deepest conception of the Rupa Sampar, Nuga Sampar is given by Kaviraj Goswami. He gives statements like this. And this perhaps is an indication or a, an example of that. But what is generally surveyed there comes from these two verses. First, Ahushchaste Nalina Nava Parara Binda Jogi Share Hidivichintyama Gadhabudai Sangsara Kupa Patito Tarava Taranava Lambam Geham Jushama Pi Manasuriat Sadana, which is the expression of the gopis to Krishna. And they Praise the Lord in two ways. As, or sorry, three ways. First, they say that his, he has a lotus like navel. In other words, that he is beauty personified. He has this extraordinary, beautiful nature. And that Jogai Shara, Hidi Machintim, Agadha Buddhai. Two groups Jogai Shara and Agadha Buddha. Jogai Shara means masters of yoga means great ascetics or yogis, and agadha buddhai means persons of unfathomable intellect or unfathomable understanding. So it means jnanis and yogis, simply put. Hridi machintya gad means they're always meditating upon you. The yogis and jnanis, they're engaged constantly in meditation and in a search for you. Some of them may know that Krishna is actually what they're, the subject of their search. Some of them may consider it more generally as Brahman or Paramatma, Savishesh, Nirvishesh, whatever the case may be. Actually, what they're meditating on, actually what they're all searching for is you. And they're engaged, you know, freedom, Hridya Chintam. They're like, through, like Chinta, through, in a mental way, through meditation, thought, they are searching after you. So, one way that's praise, right, throughout the Bhagavatam, the Lord is praised. Who is, the Lord is so great, he's even meditated upon by the gods and the rishis. Wow, you know, even, you know, someone whom even these amazing people meditate on, he must be so great. That, generally speaking, it's praise. It's, it's something, uh, this, to show the ex some strata <coughs> and how exalted the position of the Lord is. But, from another perspective, it's also slight of the yogis and jnanis. It's, they're always searching after you, but how? Yeah, with their mind, with meditation. You know, this is dry. 
you know, just meditation, just theory, just philosophy, just texts. Oh, oh, this is a dry thing. They're carrying on with that. In that method, they're looking after you. So both ways are there. One way, they're praising those persons, like as if to say, these exalted, highest authorities in our society, most revered, stalwart representatives of the Vedic culture, they're also searching after you. They are so great. And another way, <laughs> they're just like, they're just thinking about it. They don't even know. <laughs> Both meanings are there. And then, samsara kup. Mean, kup means a well, specifically a well that is just dark. You can't see the bottom. That's called a kup. Sometimes an onda kup. So in the Bhagavad, many times, material existence, and sometimes, more specifically, household life, just repeating what's being said, is compared to an undercoop, or a black <laughs> well, a dark well. Um, why? Right? We can say because once you're in a well, you can't see anything outside of that. So once you fall into material existence, you don't see anything outside of material existence. Or once you enter into family life, all you see the world is in the interest of your family, and that's it. Local interest versus universal interest. That sense of a well, a limited purview. You're judging, assessing everything according to this little localized focus interest. This is what we see, you know. In America, it's praised by politicians as family values. <laughs> I'm not going on the further on that one. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> With a pocket full of shell, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> This dark well of material existence, of local interest. That, that local, local interest is synonymous with darkness. Cannot perceive things properly because of this shallow interest. So, Sangsara Kupa Potita. The persons who have fallen into such darkness, fallen into such a well. Taranavalambam. Tarana means their upliftment or their deliverance. And Avalamban means the means or the support for that. So how do you get someone out of a, out of a well with a rope? So a rope would in this case be described as avalamban, or the means by which or the support by which a thing is affected. That is, it's like an abstract word, avalamban. So, samsara kupa patito tavana avalamban, that your feet, you are the, sh- are the means by which persons can be rescued from this well of material existence. So, from one perspective, this is also praise of the Lord. You are so great. You're meditated on by the liberated souls, and you save the fallen souls. Ja, the Lord is so great. Or another perspective is the persons who are struggling in material existence, by taking shelter in you or by appealing to you, they become uplifted. But uplifted how high? Out of maya or to sharga? <laughs> means, means like that you're also people are also using you for their material purposes they're worshipping you they're showing some respect to you why? to go up to get out of their, their impoverished or poor or dark condition and experience material opulence and pleasures so these yogis they're, they're following you in just a mental way and these other people they're just using you for their material purposes they're just taking help of you to seek whatever higher material gains they may have. So both ways, it has slant on both sides. And then, Geham Jushamapi Modasudyat Sadhana. But who are we? Right? We are Geham Jusham. Means, Jusha means someone who is engaged with. And Geham means a house. It means we're householders. Or we're homeowners. We're, we're family people. So, we're not, uh, so in other words, we're simple people. We're not aspiring for these higher things, be it sarga or liberation. We're not engaged in higher meditation. We're just simple household people. That's all we are. We're just living our simple household life. We don't have any kind of higher thought or aspiration at all. We're just simple people, not these great persons with these big ideas, great ambitions. But Geham Jushamopi, even though we are such, 
Monosya Udiyot Sadana. May we pray that you will always, or rather the verses about his feet, that your feet may always be present in our hearts. That we will always have thought of you, that we will always feel your connection. So one perspective, it is like a humble prayer. You are the most beautiful, attractive, wonderful Lord. You're meditated on by the most exalted people. You're the means by which everyone is seeking all these higher attainments. And we simple, you know, small-minded, how, you know, village people, we just want that. We will always feel your presence in our hearts. We are just humbly praying like this. That's one side. Or the other side is... You know, these yogis, these jnanis, they're just trying to meditate on you. They don't understand anything. And all these other people, they just, they're just taking, make use of you just to get out of their suffering. There's no substance in that. We're your family. We're your, the people who actually love you. We're the people who are really connected with you. You know, and, and it's like they're chastising Krishna. And you can't even, you can't even show any attention to us. You can't even come and show any regard for us. And now you're a king, now you're worshipped, you got these yogis and sages and counselors and all these things. So, like that, I'm a little loosely talking, but there's said to be two sides of their expression. One way it is praise, and, in, and so as not to disturb the respect or the prestige that he carries in the society that he's in. But simultaneously inside that, they're going like, we're not impressed with all, you know, royalty and chariots and horses and sounds and all this grandeur. Like, this is no, this is, this is painful to see. We don't like to see these things. That is also expressed in Charitam. So then, how does Krishna reply to this rich statement? Then his reply is given, this is his reply. Saying that, Mai Bhaktir Hibhutanam. That people, they have devotion to me. They have bhakti for me. Amrita Thaya Kalpate. But why? Why do they have devotion? Amrita Thaya. For the sake of Amrita. So, again, multiple meanings. One meaning, liberation. When they, they're just trying to get out of their suffering, so they worship me. Means, this is dry. You know, they, they're just appealing to me for some object of their own. That amrita could mean sarga and the pleasures, the enjoyment of high forms of material existence, or it could mean the cessation of all material sorry. Like this, people have devotion to me, but for their own interest. He's saying like that. But jaddishtad ashin mot sneho. But the affection, sneha, that you have for me, that, I, that is seen, that has come, and he says, jaddishta, means like by providence, so to speak, this affection that has come to you for me, the affection you have for me, that's come by this good fortune. Bhavatinam right? marapana. That is the guarantee that you will attain me. Like the affection that you're feeling for me right now, Take that as the guarantee that we're going to be back together. Believe in that. The love that you have for me, believe in the power of that love. It's sure, I'm, I'm going to come under its control, you're going to attain me again. That's one meaning. Or the other meaning, humble meaning. You know, like, he's, like if they're praising him, then he's praising them. You know, and saying... Oh, you know, it's true. These people, they're not really, you're really the people who love me and your love is so great, you will get me. Don't worry. Or another side, he, there after he gets chastised, then he's, he's accepting that. And he's saying, because it's, it's abstract. It says, by fortune, this, this affection that you have will ensure that we will meet again. But it's like, whose fortune is that? Is it their fortune? So one interpret, you know, the Guru Maharaj, even the Golden Volcano, there's a whole chapter on this whole thing, right? And there's other talks where he goes into it. So one way, the fortune is applied to them, and the other way, the fortune is applied to him. Generally, oh, you're fortunate, you'll get me, you know, you're fortunate to have me, you know. Like the other thing, I'm fortunate. It's my fortune that you have such love for me. That's my good fortune 
So that you will that we may meet again, that is you know, that is assured. I'm giving myself, I'm committing to that. If you're, you know, why are you attention to all this? What about us? Yes. I am fortunate you have such love for me. I will give attention, you know. He's reciprocating like that. Something like that, I pray I'm not mucking anything up by saying all of this. Um, so this sort of hidden exchange took place in the midst of the crowd. Because everything is so nice in, in the scriptures. Nobody ever gets unnecessarily disrespected. You know, that's like, you know, Brahma, Shiva. Krishna's really into that. Maintaining everybody's social standing, but simultaneously doing everything that's really interesting. But, you know, Brahma's whatever boons he gave, okay, let it be. And he doesn't take, that's not like, he sometimes says, Brahma, come on, you know, <laughs> don't be giving out, you know, like, don't be giving out these kind of boons to these people. He says like that. But at the same time, it's like he takes that as an opportunity for, like, this incredible Leela. You know, so that's the nice point of Vaishnava culture. Everybody will be given honor. Everybody's honor will be maintained. Even if they're misbehaved, their honor will be maintained. Right? But how to do that and represent the truth and the finer points and the feeling, you know, that is like the art and the beauty of all of these things. That is like, you know, Sakode Saman, Korite Shokoti, Deho Mori, Jota Jota. So this way, you know, that's very nice, attentive things, you know. And even, you know, when such intense feelings are there, they're not just, oh, we're not going to bother with this formality. It has, like, no meaning. Let's, you know, it's like, no. Like, everything is, like, adjusted in such a way where the whole formal thing is perfectly intact, and side by side, there's this very cutting, like, gripping thing in the one go. So, Gurudev explained, you know, that that uh, why didn't Krishna show attention to the devotees? They le- he left Braja and then he didn't come back. And he didn't show so much interest. He never physically, he went to Dwaraka and here and there and so many places. He couldn't go back to Vrindavan even once. So he, he, the way he gave this explanation, he said that, that Krishna, quote-unquote, left Vrindavan for the sake of protecting Vrindavan. And why? I mean, so when he's away, he went only out of service to the people of Vrindavan. Only out of love for the people of Vrindavan, he's protecting them. And then he's not showing attention to them. Why? Because if he shows how much love he has for Vrindavan, then all his enemies will go and attack Vrindavan. They will know that that is the way by which they can control him. So he appears to be aloof so that the people don't see that as a target, so that he can keep them safe. That's how Gurudev explains it. This, you know, Guru, he doesn't show this regard externally, actually out of care for their well-being. That is how it is balanced, so to speak. But we don't see or hear in Bhagavatam that Krishna actually comes back. This whole exchange takes place, but we don't see that literally he goes there. But Gurudev explained that actually every day he goes there and he appears in the hearts of the people. This prayer, Geham Jushamapi Manasi Udiyat, like, like to appear within their, in their minds. That what they prayed for, he ge- fulfills that prayer. And he's coming every day. But that the residents of Braja, they're experiencing that, but it's just on the edge of real. Is that a dream? Did that happen? It's like somehow it's happening, but they have sometimes, like, were the, was that a daydream? Was that a, a dream? Was that a vision? Did that really happen? It's somehow in some, some layer where they're really experiencing and feeling it, but there's some haziness or some question about what that is. Um, but that in that way, the Guru said, like lightning. He is sometimes like coming to them, you know, again and again. And, and that, that sort of, of connection with Krishna or darshan with Krishna within their hearts, that that is the example of union and separation or this highest type of darshan or connection with Krishna. 
So we don't see that, apart from that, that he literally returned there. But here in Ratayatra, then Mahaprabhu, he is enacting a pastime so as to say that as if at Ratayatra, when this message was exchanged, Krishna said, okay, let's go. And then they brought Mahaprabhu Krishna directly back to Vrindavan. What sort of homecoming, what sort of celebration, what sort of parade, what sort of excitement would they feel if they could, they had gone there and their simple hearted love had captured Krishna's heart and he just dropped all these royal things and dropped all these other things and just immediately came back. What sort of joy and excitement would be felt in that moment? That, as Mahaprabhu is going to Gundicha and chanting and dancing, he is feeling that, he is tasting that. Um, and then, so these exchanges between Mahaprabhu and Jagannath as he dances uh, carry such feeling, such import. Anyway, I pray I have not uh, made any offense in the course of trying to describe all of these things, but what we've heard uh, Gurudev and Guru Maharaj and as written in Chari Tamrita in praise of these things, like a child, we are getting them and they are tasting like candy and we're like, oh wow, we heard this, we heard that and it's so extraordinary, it's so wonderful. But as we know, the price for real experience of these things is exclusive dedica dedication of our entire self for eternity. <laughs> um, so by having any sort of attempt to glorify or describe these things, we pray that it may only fill us with a sincere resolve to embrace that price, to be ready to offer such payment in return. All right, well, what do we have here? The Jagannath Astakam. <laughs> well, I'll conclude, Maharaj. Um, can I pass it to you or to you? Or I don't know, what would you like to do now? Yes, sir. I don't know, would you like to say anything or yeah, sing so, anything? Or? Yeah. So today is, as Maharaj was mentioning, Rathi Yatra which is a world-famous uh, festival where Lord Jagannath is, is and all of them's weather are pulled by cart on the shore and free. Um, and this is a song to Lord Jagannath that we want to sing in Sanskrit. Do we know who composed this? So it's a very, very beautiful song. It contains many of the feelings that Maharaj was um, so beautifully explaining, such depth. Kodachit kalindi ta to vipina sangi ta karavo.
On the shore of the great ocean, within a large palace atop the brilliant golden Nilachal hill, Lord Jagannath resides with his powerful brother Balabhadra and his sister Subhadra, who sits between them. May that Jagannath Shami, who bestows the opportunity for devotional service upon all godly souls, be the object of my vision. Lord Jagannath is an ocean of mercy and as beautiful as a row of blackish rain clouds. He is the storehouse of bliss for Lakshmi and Saraswati, and his face resembles a spotless, full-blown lotus. The best of demigods and sages worship him, and the Upanishads sing his glories. May that Jagannath Swami be the object of my vision. When Lord Jagannath moves along the road on his Rathayatra car, at every step, large assemblies of Brahmanas, Brahmans loudly chant prayers and sing songs for his pleasure. Hearing their rhymes, hymns, Lord Jagannath becomes very favorably disposed toward him, toward them. He is the ocean of mercy and the true friend of all worlds. May that Jagannath Swami, along with his consort Lakshmi, who was born in the ocean of nectar, be the object of my vision. Lord Jagannath, whose eyes resemble full-blown lotus petals, is the ornament on Lord Brahma's head. He resides on Nilachal Hill with his lotus feet placed on the heads of Anantadev. Overwhelmed by the mellows of love, he joyfully embraces Srimati Radharani's body, which is like a cool pond. May that Jagannath Swami be the object of my vision. I do not pray for a kingdom, nor do I pray for gold rubies or wealth. I do not ask for a beautiful wife as desired by all men. 
I simply pray that Jagannath Swami, whose glory Lord Shiva always sings, may be the constant object of my vision. O oh Lord of the demigods, please quickly remove this useless material existence I am undergoing. O oh Lord of the Yadus, please destroy this vast, shoreless ocean of sins. Alas, this is certain. This is certain. Lord Jagat bestows his lotus feet upon those who feel themselves fallen and have no shelter in this world but him. May that Jagannath Swami be the object of my vision. Self-restrained, virtuous soul who recites these eight verses Glorifying Lord Jagannath becomes cleansed of all sins and duly proceeds to Lord Vishnu's abode. Jai Jagannath!
भक्ति सिद्धांत और सरस्वती ठाकुर को उपाय की जाए जगत गुरु श्री भक्ति वेरा सुसानु महाराज को उपाय की जाए श्री लगभग की सरदार बाबा जी महाराज की जाए चरणानंद भक्ति नो ठाकुर की जाए जाए रूपानु गुरु भर्ग की जाए श्री सतो स्वामी प्रभु की जाए जाए प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु ने क्या आनंदा श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री बासादी गौ भक्त ने लिखी जाए श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपिना श्याम कुंदर राधा कुंद की गोवर धन की जाए मथुरा धाम की जाए मुना देवी की जाए श्री तुलसी महारानी की जाए जाए गंगा देवी की जाए श्री नवदी धाम की जाए श्री कोलदी धाम की जाए अपराध भयंज रफर की जाए जाए श्री गोविंद कुंड की जाए जाए गंगा धर सदाशिव प्रभु की जाए पुरुषोत्तम धाम की जाए पुरी धाम की जाए श्री राधा जयंत्र की जाए जाए जगन्नाथ भलदेव सुभद्रा माँ की जाए श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाए चिपाद भक्ति विज्ञान ऐसी महाराज की जाए कमाल क्या की महाराज की जाए संन्यासी गण भक्त बन की जाए वेद भक्त बन की जाए आनंद को तिवारी बन की जाए जाए नाम संकीर्तन की जाए Oh, my God. 